All right, so let's start with the story. Around three or four years into my playing, I found out about Kiko Larrero, who to this day is one of my favorite guitar players of all time. These days he plays for Megadeth, so he's pretty well known now, but back in the day he was just known for playing with a Brazilian band known as Angra, who are actually one of my favorite bands. Definitely would recommend that you check those guys out if you haven't. Um, but I saw Kiko, I loved his playing, and I also really loved the guitars that he played. Now, he plays Ibanez these days, but back in the day, Kiko was playing on a brand called Tajima, which is a Brazilian band, and he had his own signature model with them, which was a really cool guitar for a number of reasons, but one of the coolest things about it was, unlike many, many other guitars, or there are very few of these ever made uh, that I've seen, and it, at the time, it was actually the first time I had ever seen a guitar like this, it had 27 frets. So it had this slanted design where the 27 frets really are only on the highest strings, and the fretboard itself is not straight, it ends in a slant, and the pickup is slanted matching that same angle. Uh, now there, there are definitely a few guitars that have been made um, across time, you know, electric guitars that have that design, but I had never seen anything like it, and I thought it was really cool. Um, not just that you could, you know, get up there and go really high to a, that really high uh, G note, but uh, just the fact that it had this different design, something about it really looked uh, unique to me. So I really liked that. Now, Kiko also played on a ESP signature model for a while. At the time, I was a pretty big ESP fan myself. I had just gotten my LTD M1000, so I really liked the brand as well, so I wanted to check out some more of what he had. So I was looking into his special, uh, his signature model with ESP, which also had the 27 frets. They came in a few different colors. One of them had a cool flame inlay. And I noticed that it was actually only available in Japan. But what I also noticed was that there was a cheaper version of it made through another offshoot of ESP called Edwards. Now, in the US, we had LTD, we still have LTD, ESP has a few other things. I think E2 might still be a thing, I don't know if they still make E2 models. But in the US, we don't have anything called Edwards, so I had never seen this before. It's a Japan-only, um, you know, sub-brand of ESP. And I noticed they had a lot of other guitars in addition to Kiko's signature model. Now, one of the things that I found there was this guitar that I'm holding right now. This is the... ESP Edwards ECY165CTM. I seem to gravitate towards guitars with long names that have a bunch of letters and numbers. If you've seen my Ibanez uh, review, you'll, you'll know a thing or two about that. But yeah, my mind was kind of blown immediately because, for one thing, a 27 fret guitar is always eye-catching, even in the modern era. I mean, they're around, you know, but you don't, you don't see them too often. It's not a common thing. Most shreddy kind of guitars have 24 frets. Uh, then if you have more like classic Gibson style guitars, you'll have 22, or some strats even only have 21. But the 27 fret design is very iconic because of that slanted fret design. And rarely will you see a 27 fret guitar without, you know, using that technique because otherwise you push the neck pickup too far down and then you're going to sacrifice some tone. I believe that's why they, they chose to do this, whoever originally designed that. But, you know, like I said, I already love that design, so I thought this is really, really cool. I also love, I know a lot of people probably think it's gaudy, it's kind of like, love it or hate it, but the um, the Tree of Life inlay, which obviously is popularized and probably originated in Steve Vai's Gem series guitars, um, I was never too much of a fan of the Gem itself for a number of reasons. I think it's a cool guitar, but the overall aesthetic of that guitar is not really for me. But the Tree of Life inlay I loved. It's also on the J Customs. But I saw that, I saw the 27 frets. I also saw the blue quilted top. So for me, I don't really have a favorite color, but with guitars specifically, I really like blue. I don't know what it is, but blue guitars with a figured top really, really hit me. Other things blue, I don't like. I don't like blue cars, I don't like blue cell phones, you know. Guitars though, blue's, blue's the way to my heart. Uh, the, especially the combination of blue and gold hardware. Something about that, like, it takes me to Atlantis, I, I don't know. Uh, especially when you have some abalone thrown in there, just to kind of mix it up. This, the, the inlays, I believe, are pearl and abalone for, like, the little flowers that it has on it. So, eye-catching, super eye-catching. Also, the Seymour Duncan pickups on the fan, I saw this guitar, I fell in love instantly. 
Um, just a quick side note, I think the reason they don't make Edwards in the US is because they do uh, like Gibson clones, they have like Les Paul and SG clones, which I've heard are pretty good, never played on one of them, but if you're looking for a clone like that, maybe check out Edwards. Um, but that's illegal to, for them to sell because of copyright stuff um, in the US. But anyway, so I, I immediately fell in love with it. The only thing was uh, I took a look and with the, you know, all the shipping costs to import it from Japan, because it's a Japan only instrument, as well as just the price of the instrument alone, um, was upwards of $1,200, maybe $1,500, depending on what the total would have come out to with tax and everything. And keep in mind, at this point in history, <laughs> I was, I don't know, like 17, 18 maybe? So I didn't have that kind of money at all. So it kind of just became my dream guitar. For the longest time, it was my, my background on my, on my phone, my wallpaper on my phone, and I would always kind of just check up on it, look at it, see if the price went down or something, see if I could get it, you know, maybe, maybe one of my parents would get it for me for Christmas or something like that, like a spoiled brat that I was. But yeah, it just kind of sat in the back of my mind for the longest time. And fast forward to early 2020, and you know, my tastes have changed here and there, but I really, really still loved what this guitar is, everything about it that I already just told you guys. So, also, this year, fortunately, I have been doing a lot better financially, and I had been, you know, I, I guess you could say I could have afforded this guitar quite a while ago, but I was definitely not in a position where I would just drop over a thousand dollars on a guitar. But, and I, even, even this year, I kind of wasn't, but I looked and, I was starting to see fewer and fewer results for it. And then I went to the Edwards website where I'd always kind of just checked up on it and I noticed it was missing from there. But then I actually took a look a little bit further and I noticed that it wasn't missing but it was in a little folder, a little pull down bar that said discontinued items. So you see where I'm going with this. This guitar was discontinued. I'm not sure what year it was discontinued in but they don't make it anymore as of early 2020, um, as of when I'm making this video as well. And then I was like, well, that's not good. So I started looking to see who actually was still selling one. You could still get it new at this time. This was back in January of 2020, before COVID, BC. And, but the, to get it new, the only people who were selling it were selling it for like over two grand. And I'm like, as much as this guitar, you know, means to me for the, the dream of it and how cool it is, I was not about to spend two grand on a guitar that especially wasn't even worth that uh, if it was, you know, originally priced that way. So I was really kind of like, well, I guess, you know, I guess I'm not gonna get any more. I'm not really a fan of used gear, but I did start looking then. I started to see what, just what was available. And I found this one seller who was listing it on both eBay and Reverb that had one of these, it was used, but looking at the pictures and from their description, it was like in perfect condition. Like the best you could possibly ask for from a used instrument. Now, at the same time, it, it's concerning buying something used online, something that you never see in your hands. You can only really go by the pictures. So I looked at the pictures. There was really nothing I could find flaw-wise in the pictures except for one little like dot on the body right around here. And I messaged the seller because I'm, I, you know, I'm not about to drop all this money until I could be as sure as possible. I said, you know, can you tell me a little bit more about the condition of the instrument? You know, blah blah blah. And the seller was, I would say, a little rude to me. Like they clearly did not want the trouble of like giving me more information they're you know kind of just like oh yeah you know it's it's a used instrument you always got to be careful buying used instruments but it's in good condition like i get it where they're coming from especially they were a shop you know they wanted to i, I don't know but to me it was it turned me off a little bit you know because this was a big purchase for me but i i pursued because it's kind of the only option i had i said yeah okay you know just is there anything you could check up on for me to see like you know take a look at the uh is this dot a scratch or there any scratches on it, whatever Apparently like it was in storage at the shop or whatever. So the guy did pull it out. He said, uh, it's an absolutely pristine, clean instrument. You know, there's no scratch where you said, blah, blah, blah. So I slept on it. I called a good friend of mine, my friend Kevin, who at the time, I think he worked for Guitar Center. He works for Sam Ash now, but he uh, knows a thing or two about, you know, buying and selling gear. So I had him take a look at the, um, the listing for me. He was very impressed. He says, wow, this is actually in really, really good shape. A few things you noticed, like the um, this little bump thing here was, was not at all worn away. There were no pick scratches anywhere on it. It looked like it was in really good condition. It also included all of the original um, like hardware. Uh, I'm not sure what they specified in the listing, but 
Um, as you can see where I'm going with this, the, that was the one that I bought. It even came with the, the little stickers on the pickups. They, they weren't on the pickups, but they're in, they're still maintained and the original case because the guitar did originally come with a case. So yeah, as I've basically already told you, I, I went for it. Uh, it was not an easy decision for sure. And under any other circumstances, I don't think I would have dropped that on a guitar, but it was my only chance to get it as far as I saw. And it was in absolutely fantastic condition as far as I could tell. So I went for it. A few days later, it arrived in a giant cardboard box. I opened up the cardboard box. It's completely wrapped in multiple layers of bubble wrap, which was very, um, you know, nice to hear. Also, by the way, I'm in New York City and it was shipping from Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> so that's like about as far as you can get within the US. It's definitely a little bit nervous about that. But I opened it up. The strings were all just, you know, detuned, I guess, for shipping, but there was like cardboard underneath the strings. It was, it was like it shipped really, really well. I tuned it up. It was basically set up perfectly. Um, and I guess the more, you know, glaring point, super, absolutely perfect condition. Like it, it's a new instrument. As far as I'm concerned, there was no sign of use anywhere on it. I couldn't tell anything that it was used in any way. So I don't know who sold this to the shop or maybe the shop themselves purchased this instrument to try and sell it and then just had it on display and then never, I don't know. But wow, I was, I could not have been more impressed by the quality of the instrument, uh, the condition in general, fantastic. So that was really, really a great, great experience. Real quick, me from the future right here, guys. If you made it this far, I would ask that you please consider subscribing to the channel. I've got a lot more cool guitar-related content on the way, and I would love it for you to join me on my YouTube guitar adventures. All right, but how does it actually play? So I was actually really, really impressed with the overall feel of it uh, when I first picked it up. It was set up with nines, which are not my preference for strings. I use tens. Nines and tens, is that what they call them these days? You know, the, the super light ones are like the regular light ones that uh, they have. Um, but at, initially, like, it was set up really nicely from the shop also. Like the action was just extremely low. But I wasn't initially sure of like, is this just the lighter gauge strings that I'm used to that, that make it feel this good? I don't know. So eventually I did set it up with tens, but it, the setup is still really nice. I set it up a little bit. Uh, obviously had to adjust a few things for the, the increase in string gauge but it plays really, really fantastically. The neck is thin, but it's a little bit thicker, I would say, than like the neck on my Ibanez, the wizard profile. And this was something that I didn't really notice at first until I started kind of going back and forth between this and my Ibanez, because obviously when I first got this, I just primarily played on this all the time. Uh, and I think I do prefer the neck on my Ibanez, but this is definitely very nice. And it's in some ways it's more comfortable because it's like I can kind of, you know, I don't have to use as much of my hand muscles to kind of like grip the neck. My hand can kind of stay a little bit more comfortable. I don't think it's by any means a thick neck, but it's definitely a little bit thicker than like an Ibanez neck profile. The frets, I actually forget what the size of the frets are, um, but they feel fine, they feel great. One of the things that even when I was just, you know, dreaming about purchasing this instrument, I was a little concerned about was the fact that the inlay doesn't have like fret markers. I think even on the Ibanez Tree of Life inlays, they have like strategically placed buds and flowers of the vine to, you know, signify the frets, like the third fret, fifth fret, seventh fret, you know, where you typically have dots. But this guitar didn't have that. So I was like, well, am I gonna be able to like tell where I are, uh, where, where I am on the fretboard? And yes and no. <laughs> yes and no, actually, when it comes to that. So, uh, so as you would imagine, we still have the side dots. I don't know if you can see them in this shot. I'll probably put like a picture of them on the screen or something for you. So it still has side dots, which quite are quite reliable. I have a nylon string guitar that has just no inlays. So I kind of learned to rely on side dots for that. But interestingly, I would say that the vine is harder to use as a reference than no inlay at all. Because it's not just that the vine uh, doesn't you know, mark where the specific frets are, but it actually just kind of works out to be misleading in a way. So for example, if you look right here, there is a little flower, right? There's a little bud or whatever you want to call it of the vine that comes out there. And this is the 13th fret. This is the 12th fret. 
So yeah, and that happens a few other times uh, around the guitar side. If you're if you're looking for something that sticks out to tell you where one of those dotted frets would be, this tells you the wrong frets. So it's a lot better to just rely on the side dots. This is not a big issue, but it's definitely something that is a little confusing. And I actually find that a lot of times I'll play better on it if I'm not looking at the fretboard at all and just relying on my muscle memory of where to go because looking at it can actually be pretty misleading. So I guess that's something to consider if you were looking at a guitar that has this kind of inlay and I don't know, it doesn't have the dots, but it's rare to find one with an inlay like this besides for the Ibanez anyway. Other stuff uh, about the guitar, it has an original Floyd Rose or, well, it's like a, I guess it's probably one of the Floyd, Floyd Rose 1000 series, I guess like the Japanese Floyd Rose. I'm not an expert on them, but it feels great. You know, every Floyd Rose that I've had feels more or less the same in a great way. It's the first gold one I've got though. The pickups, uh, you'll hear some samples of them. They sound very good, very meaty sound to the bridge pickup. I like it for some things, not for other things. neck pickup does sound like I could stand to have a, a little bit less treble in it, which is probably a result of how close to the bridge it is compared to the normal position of a neck pickup. But it does sound nice. This is a Seymour Duncan Cool Rails, if I recall correctly, which is similar to the Hot Rails. It is a humbucker. It's not a single coil. It's a single coil sized humbucker. A lot of people think it's a single coil because, I mean, they kind of look like them, but it's still a humbucker. <laughs> Yeah, through this we're getting three-way switch we have on it. Uh, what else to talk about? It's a neck through construction. So you can see there's like the stripe of the neck going through the body. And I think it's a seven-piece neck. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, seven-piece neck with hard maple and walnut, if I recall correctly. We also have the, um, of course, the quilt is carried through on the headstock, which is really cool. And yeah, it's a quilt maple top on a, um, geez, am I forgetting the body wood? I think it's ash. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a swamp ash body or ash. I'm not sure the difference between regular ash, and swamp ash. One of them comes from a swamp, I don't know. But yeah, it's an ash body, which uh, actually I actually forgot how heavy ash is. It's, a, it's actually, I think it's the heaviest guitar I own. It's quite heavy, which is a good or a bad thing, depending on what you want. I mean, this is not really a review. I'm just kind of talking about my impressions of the instrument. So I guess the, the question that remains as this is, was technically my dream guitar that I bought it, is it my favorite guitar that I own? And that's a really difficult question to answer because I really do love it. But I also really, really love the Ibanez that again, you can check out the review that I put on uh, of this channel. And I keep falling more and more in love with that guitar, which I also have had longer than this. Then I also have a really special SG, which Frankly, I don't enjoy playing too much, but I'm gonna have a video coming up about that soon too. I have a, an SG that's like one of a kind in a few ways that I really love because it's, it was one of the first guitars that I ever owned also. So I don't know if it's my favorite guitar of all the ones that I own, but it is one of my favorites for sure. And it's a really special thing to me. And I can tell you honestly, even if I hated the way it played, which fortunately I don't, it plays fantastically. But even if I hated the way it played, I would be happy that I got it simply because it was just something for like 10 years I wanted this guitar. This would have been the first guitar that I would get if I could just get any instrument that I wanted. And after all that time to be able to finally say I have it, it's part of my collection, it's something I can play. I'm really, really satisfied with that. And I'm really, really glad every time I play it and every time I get to look at it and can say that I have it. So let me know what you guys think of this guitar. Have you actually ever heard of it? Because even, you know, most people have probably never heard of Edwards to begin with because they're not even around in the US. What do you think of it? Are you into this kind of design? You prefer something different? And most of all, let me know what your dream guitar is. What kind of guitar do you guys want? If you were handed $100,000 right now, hopefully that's enough to buy it. What guitar would be the first one you pick up? Let me know and I'll catch you guys in another video. Thank <laughs> you.